Oh boy. Reading. One of the finest joys in life. And I do it here in my study. Sometimes when the kids are all busted, Todd. Do I? This is my personal time. Quiet. If you've ever worked on set before, or even been involved in a school play, you've probably seen a studio flat before. They are light, movable walls that have the amazing ability to transform into anything you need them to be. Like an elevator, or an entire house, or even just the corner of a room like the one that we made here. They're an incredibly versatile tool in the filmmaker's arsenal, and they've been used to create sitcom sets, movie sets, just about anything that's shot in a studio, it's probably made with flats. The idea of building your own set can be extremely daunting, and just the thought of it can haunt someone. reason to fear the flat. It's time to make it your own. Here's what you're going to need to build four flats. Four masonite boards, eight two by fours, 16 one by threes, wood glue, hammer, drill, tape measure, vice grip, one and a half inch conventional wood nails, two and a half inch wood screws, and a power saw. All in all, the supplies cost about $150, about $38 per flat. Once you've assembled all of your supplies, it's time to start building out the frame. The frame we are using is going to be a 4x8 rectangle made of 1x3 wood with a support slat through the middle. The masonite board is 4x8 feet, so the boards that run along the sides don't have to be cut. The interior slats need to fit between the running boards, so just subtract 4 feet by the width of both boards, which is combined to 1.5 inches. That means that you need to cut each slat at a measurement of 3 feet and 10.5 and inches. You can cut all of your boards at once, or cut as you go, but to start out, all you need is 3 slats. Line up your slats to sit flush with your masonite board. Once you've got a rough estimate of the shape, hammer in nails to the joints of the boards. Do this for every joint on the rectangle. If you can get something to support your frame while hammering, that would be preferable since I was not wise enough to think of that during the build. After your frame is assembled, take the masonite board out from under the frame. Go around the frame and put wood glue on all the surfaces of the wood. Once coated, carefully lay your board along the frame. It's okay if it's not perfectly flush, just make sure that the bottom seam is flush so it doesn't bear weight when standing. Once the glue has dried and you have a solid base, take your hammer and wood nails and secure the board along all the seams. I'm not talking about a few nails on the corners, make sure you've truly attached that bad boy to the frame. My recommendation is about 10 nails on each vertical side and then 6 nails on each horizontal side. Now that the board is secure, flip the flat to the other side. It's time to add the main support beam. Grab an uncut 2x4 and place it in the middle of the flat. It should sit flush with the 1x3 frame. Drill two pilot holes on every intersection of the wood, and then drill in screws to each hole. So now that you have a completed flat, all you have to do now is make it stand upright with some stance. This one is actually a pretty simple attachment. Just saw a 2x4 and a half, which is 4 feet a piece, and then saw a 45 degree angle into the ends of both boards. Place the cut pieces onto the back of the flat and sit them so that their angled ends are flush with the ground. Once you have your desired angle, get your vice grip and secure the boards to the flat. Once in place, drill two holes through the 2x4s on each side and drill in two screws to attach the boards to the flat. To make the stand more sturdy, you can drill in a cross beam using a cut 1x3 plank so that the boards won't move independently. It's also pretty handy as a handle to move these flats around. Now that construction is complete, paint the flats to your desired color. We made a study type room, so I chose a light maroon to coat my flats. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. So now that your flats are completely assembled, arrange them in the way that you want your room to look like. Dress up the flat with some paintings, lamps, and other accoutrements to sell the realism of the room. Remember, the more items that you have in your room, the more it feels like an actual room. The more bare it is, the more people might believe it's a set. Paintings and canvases along the wall will help cover seams, but if you are looking to build a larger scale room, you can drape a large muslin cloth over your entire set and then paint over that so it looks like it's just one continuous piece. Once the design is all done, you've got yourself a set. 
With the correct lighting, you can use angles to your advantage to get some really quality shots that would be hard to discern from a real location. Just don't angle upwards, because there's no ceiling. So a question a lot of people ask is, why spend the money on flats whenever you can just shoot in a real location? Well, the answer to that is that flats are incredibly customizable. With flats, you can design your set to be exactly how it was described in the script. And if it needs to be changed, it can be done in a matter of minutes. And unlike location sets, you can pull out a wall to get a unique camera angle that would only be possible in a location set if you broke down the wall with a sledgehammer. So I hope I inspired you to go out and create your own set. It's incredibly fun to do, you get to work with your hands, and you really get to fine tune the vision that you have whenever making a film. I mean seriously, these are literally blank slates. You can use them to create anything. You're not confined to your dorm room, or you're not confined to just a space that you have. This is a place where you can create an awesome scene using plywood boards. So. Thanks for watching everybody, my name is Robbie Janae with Shutterstock.com and we'll see you next time.